In order to use certificate encryption or to sign our files with a digital signature, we first have to create a digital ID. As we saw in the previous video on encrypting documents with certificates, we can create a digital ID on the fly as we're encrypting our document, or we can create it directly ahead of time. If we open the Tools panel and expand the Protection category, we can click on Encrypt and choose Encrypt with Certificate. We'll click on Yes, and we'll advance through this dialog box to the point where it asks us to select a digital ID. Here, as you're trying this for the first time, you may not see any digital IDs at all. You can choose to add a digital ID, which is a self-signed certificate, just by clicking here. This brings us to the Add Digital ID dialog right in the middle of our encryption process. Now we can access this capability directly if we're creating a digital ID ahead of time. And we can do it without going through this encryption process. Let's cancel out of this. And we'll cancel out of this. And in this case, we'll go to Edit and then Preferences. Or if you're on a Mac, that's Acrobat and then Preferences. And we'll go down to the Signatures section. Here within the Signatures tab of the Preferences panel, we can click on the word More in the category of Identities and Trusted Certificates. And then here we see the list of certificates and we can click Add ID at the top. And when we do, this brings us to the same point that we were at a moment ago. Here in the Add Digital ID dialog box, we can choose to add an existing digital ID from a file, a server, or a connected device. Or we can choose to create a new digital ID, and that's what we'll do right now. We'll click Next, and this option is available on Windows only. Mac users won't see this step. Windows users will need to choose whether to store the digital ID in a file or in the Windows Certificate Store. Choosing the Windows Certificate Store allows other applications to access the digital ID, but choosing the File option allows us to share our ID with others, which is important if we're planning to collaborate and allow others to use our certificate both for validation and encryption. We'll choose the File option, and we'll click on Next. Here, now we're back in sync between Windows and Mac, and we can add our information. We can provide our name, as well as our organizational information, our email address, and our country. We'll add a fictitious name and a fictitious email address, and we'll leave the rest blank for now. We can choose the encryption key algorithm right here, and we'll choose the 2048-bit RSA method, which is more secure. Keep in mind that this may not be as universally compatible, so if that's a problem, you may want to choose the 1024-bit version. Finally, do we want to use this ID for signatures only, for encryption only, or for both? Remember, we can set up multiple IDs so that we have the option to designate a different purpose for each ID and even have a different encryption key setting for compatibility with different identifications. We'll use this for both and click on Next. And now we'll have the opportunity to choose the file location. I strongly recommend leaving this alone and accepting the default. To complete the process, we need to provide a password. And this password will be provided whenever we're using this digital ID. As we saw in the video on password encryption, we have a password strength meter. Remember, your password should be at least eight characters long and contain upper and lowercase letters, numbers, and special characters for the best strength. We'll confirm the password, and then we'll click on Finish to save the digital ID here in our security settings. Since we set this digital ID up for both encrypting and signing documents, we're ready to use it for either purpose now. If we close out of here, and we go back into the Encrypt with Certificate option, and step through once again, we can see that our new digital ID is set up and ready for use.